Hello and welcome to another set of examples for chapter three. In this, let's look at uh, model checking. Uh, so we will be doing uh, an example or a couple of examples on applying uh, some of the intuition behind model checking uh, in, in problems. So before we jump into model checking, just a few of the steps of the algorithms that uh, we have, you can check out more from the uh, textbook and the uh, video presentations that have been created. So it says something like if the formula phi is true, then return the set S. If it's false, return phi. If phi is atomic and return the set S, include S into the set and return the set. If phi is not phi 1, then it is S minus whatever are the uh, literals that are used in phi 1 and is same as intersection and uh, or is same as union implication you write it as not phi 1 or phi 2 we write we try to express a in terms of e as not e so if you're saying along all paths then we are saying not there exists uh, there does not exist at least one path which does not have uh, the formula phi 1. So you are writing A in terms of not E. So you have AX of phi is equal and to not EX of not phi. Uh, so if not phi does not exist in, uh, in any path, then it means phi exists in all the paths. That's how we are going to use it. Uh, so similarly for wherever we have A, uh, and we prove E by saying that, you know, there exists at least one path. So you traverse the path and if you find one path at least, which has phi, we say that's true. Uh, and so the formulas go along. Uh, for knowing more about these formulas, look at the textbook. Uh, it's, uh, it's a sort of a backward uh, breadth first search that we do. That is, we try to open up the tree and once we draw the tree out, in this form, we try to see uh, based on uh, the formula that we are trying to prove whether there is any path along which uh, it holds or does it hold along all the paths. So that's that's how we are trying to look at it or that's how we look at these formulas. So we look at a couple of examples to understand. These are quite intuitive once you are able to draw the tree. Uh, so let's look at a couple of examples to know how best we can do this. So here is a diagram that is being given to us and it says check whether model M uh, from S0 uh, holds uh, for the formula and the formula is given to be AFQ. Uh, so it starts from S0. So one way of simply looking at it is look at the diagram and follow the paths directly and see if it works out. So from S0 it says all future has a Q, right? So one path is from S0 to S3 and there is a Q. The other path goes from S0 to S1 and there is no Q here. So since Q is not there, we need to step one or Q ahead. So S1 goes to S2, this one, and here there is again no Q. S1 also goes to itself, which again does not have a Q. And so this does not hold. And now we can write this in English. But I would like to follow a little slightly different way which makes it easier for me, which is by drawing out the tree. So I'm starting with S0. That's my start state. S0 goes to S1 and it goes to S3. Now S3 has a Q, so this is a valid. I put a tick over there to say it goes. Now what about S1? S1 goes to S2 and S1 goes to S1 again. Now this clearly is a repeat. So this would again go back to the same thing. So that means I'm going to have a branch that says S1 dot 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 S1 and this does not have a Q. So it fails, right? So how would I write this in English? So S0 going to a q if 
S1 has a path which in future is goes to Q and S3 has also has a path which in future goes to Q. So here we have S3 has Q and so this is valid. Now S1 goes to itself and doesn't have Q. Now why this is, is because it says A, all paths. That means it has to be true for all the paths. We can't take one single path that holds and say it holds. So it does not have a Q. Hence, S0 to AFQ is not a valid model. That's how we would write it. Now let's look at another example, a little more complex. So A, G, E, F, P, R, S. So that is all paths globally will have from, from S2, here it is S2, so watch this, S2, from S2, all paths globally have as their next, there exists one path in the future which has either P or R, that is, so let me start drawing the tree, I'm starting with an S2, S2 goes to S0 and S3. S0 and S3. So this is one step. The next step, because I'm having the next set here, so I need to draw one more step at least to understand how it moves. So S3 goes to S0. That is same as this. And what about S0? S0 goes to S0 goes to S3 and S0 goes to S1 and S1 goes to S2 and S1 goes to S1. So this is the basic tree structure on which uh, we, we look out at what's possible. So now here I need to say A, G, E, F, P or R. That means here I should have in both these cases E, F, P or R. So that means at least there exists one path which has an R or a P in anything that comes after this. So let's try to write this in English. Now the formula holds if S3 E, F, P or R and S not E, F, P or R hold. Now S3 goes to S not. And so S not will be used to prove validity. S0 has a P, hence S3 going to 5, 1 is valid. And S0 goes to S1, which has R. Hence, S1 
going to phi 1 is valid. Hence, S naught A G E F of P or R is valid. So this is how you will have to write the English statements. The graph part of it is only to create an easier understanding of it. You can either follow the tracks on the given image or draw it out on uh, as a tree structure, which makes it easier. I find it to, uh, to be easier when I draw out a tree structure. So one of these two can be used to do uh, the problems. For understanding more on these problems, uh, please have a look at uh, the videos provided and uh, uh, also go through the textbook. Thank you.